Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 166 of A Report This Post, the podcast about bad posts and bad people. My name is Geiger, and that is Christian. Hey, uh, hello. And we are your hosts with the posts. Every week, Christian, myself, or a listener, select a different topic, then find horrible posts for your listening pleasure. This week's topic, as chosen by us, is Indigenous Peoples. That's right. Happy Thanksgiving to our white brothers and sisters out there. Mm hmm. And only them. <laughs> We conquered the land, oh, and made it our own. People listen to this, <laughs> and uh, it's now ours. The the spo- to the victors go the spoils, and boy and did we boys it spoiled vi- <laughs> victorate the hell out of them. So indigenous folks, uh, they are the people who supposedly were here before us. Sure, and the, the land supposedly belongs to them. Yeah, you got your uh, Apaches, you got your uh, Cherokees, you got your Eskimos, you got your Comanches. Uh, sure, Italians, all, all the big, the yep. big, the big groups. Yep. Uh, and boy, they they've been whining about that whole thing ever since, haven't they? <laughs> Some folks just, just can't, can't get can't over get it. over it. Grow up, <laughs> or. <laughs> Just go extinct and we won't ever hear from you again, which is, seems to be the current strategy <laughs> right now, where we just get rid of these folks all together. It's like we pack them up in little areas where they can't really leave and don't really have anything that they can do. Little camps of sorts, and they just kind of live their lives out there. It seems good. Seems like they're having a great time. They're, <laughs> they're rarely sober while they're there. They're... They they're just uh they're driving in trucks and well that's the extent of my indigenous knowledge as far as the people go and how they're they live. great roofers I think uh, hmm okay great so we really are experts in the field um, they were not experts in the field otherwise they wouldn't have been mowed down by all those glorious white <laughs> colonizers. <laughs> Well, to be fair, uh, the Spaniards kind of took a big chunk of them with them at first. Wow. So they were gave us a real leg like, up. <laughs> yeah, thanks thanks to our boys in Spain for that one. Wouldn't be uh, living my shit life in Florida without all that. So <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. Home of the Seminoles. There's some more Indians for you. And the Tocobaga and the... Um, uh, excuse me? So, great episode topic, especially for this here uh, Thanksgiving, where we give thanks to those fine folks, as well as, I'm not, is there any other part of Thanksgiving? What, it was just that, like, where we, like, because I remember in um, first grade, I remember very specifically, like, a uh, coloring book that we got that was, like, I mean, it was literally, like, pilgrims sitting down at a table with Indians like the feathers and the yep. and the cap and all that, the classic, and the the pilgrims with the buckles in their hat. People just put shit in their hats back then. Don't know Accessorizing. Uh, and then they were just sitting out. Everyone's got a huge smile plastered on their face. And maybe as kids, like, oh, that's pretty neat. That's cool. Yeah. They got along. That's exactly what we saw. Right? <laughs> that's that is uh, that's what it is. Those folks that hit Plymouth Rock and. Had a real fun time with the Native American folks mm-hmm. that current that lived there uh, when they breached. Uh, they told us about corn, or is it the other way around? I don't remember which one. It was uh, no. They called it maize, and we're that's like, right. "Wow, they that's crazy." We call it corn. It's yeah, like, maybe we're not so different after all. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a and bunch of disease-ridden blankets. <laughs> <laughs> now, please, uh, fuck off and die forever. <laughs> if you don't mind, my brown brothers. Uh, your land, it's so beautiful. How we much give you thanks. skedaddle? We give thanks for your 16-year-old daughters, which <laughs> we are raping endlessly. Uh, thanks a lot, folks. Um, yeah, so it's been a fun couple of hundred years since then, and uh, all that's culminating with uh, this uh, episode about the indigenous folks. That's right. Uh, it's, we're celebrating the last Thanksgiving we'll any of us will ever have. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Uh, so why don't we just go ahead and read posts about this shit? Okay, if that's what you want to do, I'm fine with it. Starting off here, someone asked Cora, I just found out that I'm one-eighth Native American. Is it wrong to want to embrace this part of me? And a gentleman named Vincent Goudry, who identifies as a white dude, answered. Mm. People with zero Japanese ancestry moved to Japan because they watched enough anime to believe they'd fit in there. I think you're fine. Don't expect them to roll out the red carpet for you, and you'll find American Indians as accommodating as anyone else interested in their culture. Heck, my Ethiopian girlfriend has expressed multiple times that I'm very Ethiopian in mannerisms and outlook. I don't understand it myself. I find most Ethiopian guys to be boorish, provincial, and immature. She shares my view, hence why she's dating a white guy. I only care for the ladies. So you can adopt an ethnic identity that you don't even have to have any connection to at all. Great. Thanks for that, (laughs) Vincent. Don't know if anyone was asking about your thoughts on Ethiopian guys in this post. <laughs> They're thuggish and ruggish, and uh, yeah, I'm much better than they are. Even my <laughs> Ethiopian girlfriend says so. <laughs> uh, uh, not a lot of Vincent dating Ethiopian gals. I would, <laughs> I would gather. That'd be my thought. Yeah. Um, Boy, wouldn't be my first pick of the litter for an Ethiopian gal, but, you know, to each their own. So. <laughs> would it be your last pick of the litter? Probably not. No. No. Well, what would be your last pick? You know, those Peruvian women that all look the same Ooh, and they're all like four yeah. feet tall. And they got <laughs> I probably, I probably, some serious frying pan face look to them. Yeah. They just... I'd probably, that'd probably be a hard pick. A real hard sell for me, but damn, they can cook though, and they wear those cool hats. They look like a, they look like a gun. That's slinger. right. They probably gobble the cock to <laughs> just get right on that thing. <laughs> big, big, wide mouth. Okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> takes it all in, <laughs> balls and all. Great. <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, that part of the world, a Mexican gentleman posted this. On the subreddit R Cringe, one time I confused Native Americans with Latinos. Okay. I'm very familiar with different cultures and can usually identify someone by their features and or accent and can pinpoint where they're from. As a waiter, if someone comes into the restaurant speaking Spanish, I speak to them in Spanish, as speaking our native tongue makes both of our lives a lot easier. Anyway, I sat this couple that looked very Hispanic, and so my first reaction was to speak Spanish. I greeted them with the standard, Hola, como están? They both looked at me in total confusion and didn't say anything for a moment. After the uncomfortable pause, and likely realizing that I had just mistakenly spoken to them in Spanish, the wife was like, Oh, we're Native American. I was in complete shock and tried to play it off, but they were super nice about it and continued to be for the rest of the meal. After that day, I vowed to never again greet a table in Spanish unless I overhear them speaking Spanish as I approach the table. They speak Spanish to me first. User Robocop Robocop responded, That's not cringe at all. Just a simple misunderstanding. Don't beat yourself up about it. To which a blue shy person responded, More like a reality check that OP needs to stop assuming people's ethnicity. I understand they are trying to be friendly and speak to someone in their primary language, but obviously they are not as good as identifying it as they think they are. Uh, To which user Thyreus123 said, Shut the fuck up. (laughs) I'm really glad we're bringing some clapbacks back into the Mm -hmm. rotation on these posts. It's good. Yeah, um... I, I have to agree that it's probably a, the, the simple must understanding thing there that uh, yeah probably assume this person works in an area with a good sized Spanish speaking population mm-hmm. so like none of this has to be an issue at right. all <laughs> you yeah. don't even, do not have to post about this mm-hmm. you could just like talk about it with the you know the rest of the staff sure. of the restaurant where you're cleaning stuff up and be like that was so funny I feel like such an idiot and then mm-hmm. never think about it again. Uh, but instead, uh, this guy decided to go to the internet and uh, see see what other people thought about it. So. Mm. And then Blue Shy Person let let the OP know that everything the OP said was correct, but from a much more condescending point of view. 
<laughs> well, why wouldn't you, though? If you have the chance to get a dig on someone, sure, you know you're going to take it. It's fine. So, mm-hmm. Which is why uh, Th- Th- Thyreus123 there uh, with the uh, shut, shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. That's that is the perfect response to to almost anything anybody posts online. So. It typically shuts people up too. I've noticed, <laughs> which is very interesting. <laughs> it really does. Unless you, you sometimes do get the person that's like, and and what do you mean by that? And it's like, well, yeah. oh, you got nothing else to add, and you just say, shut the fuck up again. <laughs> you just keep <laughs> copy paste, copy paste. Oh, I see. You have nothing else substantial to add. It's like that's right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Please shut the fuck up. I don't block people on here, so you're just going to have to keep getting, having me respond mm-hmm. until you just either stop Shut responding yourself up. or block me. So, great. Well, that's fun. Good luck to that guy uh, for just somehow ruining his job by not being able to approach people anymore by being too scared. So, mm-hmm. uh, RIP to that guy. A meme got shared over on Facebook depicting a Native American man with this over the, his uh, face on the photo in big impact font. Daylight savings time, only a white man would cut two inches from the top of a blanket, sew it to the bottom, and think he now has a longer blanket. Hmm. And a hmm. white lady responded, Racist! The Native Americans in Jamestown were still in the equivalent of a Stone Age when Europeans first arrived. They were using oyster shells, rocks, and fire to fell trees to carve into canoes when the rest of the world had already explored continents, the stars, cultivated plants, minerals, and manipulated the world's resources to grow. Daylight savings times is stupid, but memes like this make me laugh. What have we overall as a species become? (laughs) I don't know. What is this lady's point exactly? Um, she's saying that it's racist to uh, to make fun of daylight savings time, or to say it's a white man's fault to make fun of daylight savings okay. time, because the uh, the savages were still in the the dark ages when we showed up. Yeah, yeah. One of the uh, many posts uh, regarding uh, uh, white people referring to Native Americans essentially just animals before we <laughs> we showed up. <laughs> There's a lot of good ones. So we'll get to those in a little bit. Yeah, real fun. Let's be to Facebook. Here's one from there from last Thanksgiving. I will not spend today giving thanks for the things that I have because my white ancestors raped, kidnapped, and killed my native ones. White people, do not give thanks for the families, land, luxury, and health you have in the USA that you only have because of the genocide that your ancestors committed against the people you pretend to, quote, thank today. In fact, it's a genocide you continue to participate in. You are not being (laughs) thankful. You are showing off the spoils of war. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll tell you what. I'll take any excuse to not have to spend time with my family. So I will go ahead and claim this and also protest the holiday as well. Sure. Uh, I'd like to thank this 350-pound uh, woman with uh, pink hair for posting this. And really, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I'm when I'm posting a picture of just a a, a plopped pile of mashed potatoes, <laughs> it's not really showing off the spoils. It's more like here's here's the shit I'm dealing with this day. Here's the next couple days of leftovers that I will sort of stomach. For a little bit, <laughs> it's not really a braggadocio. <laughs> thanks to my family, or whatever, or who cares? Oh, these fucking pigs come over to my house, trash the place. Mm-hmm. Can't stand their stupid asses. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I am very. <laughs> but today, I am thankful. Great. Well, speaking of folks. Of a certain persuasion. Here's a story that dropped at the end of last month from CBS News. Teacher placed on leave after a video shows her wearing makeshift headdress and mimicking Native American dance during class. Mm. A high school teacher from Riverside, California, has been placed on leave after viral videos show her mocking indigenous cultures during a math class this week. 
The teacher, wearing what appears to be a plastic headband with paper cutout feathers to look like a headdress, is seen in videos jumping around the room screeching, Soka Toa, a shortened phrase for teaching trigonometry functions and tomahawk chopping. While the teacher was doing the dance, she had drawings pulled up on the class projector of stick figures with headdresses, rocks, and teepees. The teacher then sat on the top of her desk at the front of the classroom and pretended to pray to a water goddess. Water goddess, again I ask you, please tell me the secret Indian chant, she says in the video. She also makes comments about a rock god, saying he (coughs) spit out several rocks that she used during her demonstration. The rock god did this, she told her students. Thank you, rock god. The teacher, who remains unnamed, has been placed on leave while the school district investigates the incident, the district said. But this is something that just wouldn't have even been memorable as a kid. Oh, no. For us. There was uh, 100% something just as racist. When when I was in high high school, uh, we had a thing in my school called Slave Day, Mm. where the underclassmen could purchase, pull their funds together and purchase a senior person to do whatever they wanted to for an entire day. And we called it Slave Day. (laughs) <laughs> and they had it was in the g- gymnasium and all the uh, senior class uh, line classmen were lined up and uh, it yeah. was like an auction and uh, yeah cool now yeah. your school is uh, on a plantation in South Carolina to be fair <laughs> so it's a little context matters now this so this lady so this lady this has finally come out uh, it was also revealed that uh, somebody that had taken her class like 15 years ago or something uh, shared a screenshot from their yearbook, which she is wearing the headdress and talking yeah. about Native American stuff. And she is like Martha Stewart, white cracker, you know, just like see through blonde hair on this woman. So, this, yeah, this stuff really wasn't even considered even slightly off color till. <laughs> 2014 at the earliest no way never in a million years yeah no one lady was just doing what she does every year for decades and then suddenly she's (laughs) fired for it it's gotta be pretty weird (laughs) she's she's walking out of the she's holding the headdress and hanging it up and turning the light off (laughs) and to her she's probably like she's probably being like the most respectful she could even think she could be to those to those cultures too she's probably one of the least racist white yeah women she's now. not painting her face she's not yeah shaking some sort of uh, rain stick or something she's just uh well i mean even if she God. did do that she she's doing it with the idea that she's paying them respect in their own way yeah i guess that's true yeah she's not like bragging that she's we killed indian she's like <laughs> Like when you're a dumb white lady from the '90s, you're like, "This is how we pay respects to them. We <laughs> we dress like Pocahontas and we dance around and we say thank you, uh, Earth Earth Mother." <laughs> uh, and remember, next week we're going to be learning about Al Jolson, so be mm-hmm. ready for that. <laughs> well, uh, I found an article on Vice titled. Non-indigenous people have to be good allies. Here is how to start. Okay. How can we, especially those of us who aren't indigenous, support communities who are grieving? Here are some suggestions. One, educate yourself so that the indigenous people in your life don't have to keep rehashing traumas they're either experiencing or already familiar with. Hmm. Two, amplify indigenous voices. Three, check in with your indigenous friends and colleagues. Right now, indigenous (laughs) folks are hurting. So checking with them matters. There's a right way of going about it, though, by asking, how are you doing? (laughs) Set the smoke signal. (laughs) Oh, oh, come on. Hey, wait a second. (laughs) Four, support local indigenous artists and businesses. It's a great opportunity to learn about colonialism, support indigenous folks financially, as well as get some original art. Uh, There's thousands of more words in this article. I've condensed it pretty well. Well, the article, unfortunately, was shared over on (laughs) KiwiFarms.net. 
<laughs> and uh, user Thornfrog had this to say, If these engines don't shut the fuck up, the Catholic Church is going to end up apologizing with some very nice blankets, and in a few months there won't be a need for engine, quote, allies. Also, save a blanket for the journalist who wrote this shit heap. Hmm. Very good. Uh, and user Claptrap provided this uh, too long, didn't read for the article. Hey, uh, 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 it is yeah. such an interesting uh, amalgamation of people because yeah. it's nothing like scrolling through like a Kiwi Farms thread and seeing like anime avatar, anime avatar, uh, swastika. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're just like all commenting back and forth. What I find interesting is that the N-word is not censored, but retarded is. <sighs> you know, there's, there's know they have weird rules over there. They have weird rules. Uh, Don't get that. There's there's certain transgender people you can go in all all in on. There's oh, others yeah. that you can't. Uh, there's some you really. I mean, you can just straight up tell them to go kill themselves. You can just do that over and over again. Apparently, yeah, yeah. it's great. It's a great website. Is what I'm getting at. <laughs> They'll just Folks. like, hey, here's the address of uh, this person on the internet we don't like. <laughs> go go bother them. <laughs> to be fair, Noel posts his own address as well. So I guess, you know, if the owner of the website, the, the main moderator is going to put his address up, I guess it's only fair. So You're right. Okay. It's totally fine that they do that then. <laughs> that they'll post the address of a trans woman and say, here's her, here's her <laughs> parents' work. Go talk about your daughter's cock to them. Maybe you want to send her like an edible arrangement or something. Mm-hmm. Great. User Midnight Cigarette went to our, edit, our Ask Reddit to find out what is a racist song you can't believe the artist got away with. And someone mentioned the Tim McGraw song, Indian Outlaw. Mm. A now deleted user asked, can you explain it like I'm five? What makes Tim McGraw's song racist? Is it because the word Indian is considered offensive? And NP Sage responded, the fact that every line of the song takes a Native American stereotype and ramps it up to 11. The deleted user asked, aren't those the things just referencing Native American heritage, though? I don't really think he's referring to modern day Native Americans as much as a trip back in time to when those were attributes of a Native American. Wouldn't some see it as celebrating their heritage? I don't know. And Corgi Boop dropped in to comment, I have never heard the song, so I looked it up. Aside from the fact that he lives in a teepee and a wigwam, which were used in different areas, the song doesn't really seem to say anything and just list a bunch of words associated with Native Americans. It would be like if a song about Italians went like this. I'm a mobster from Italy. I like cooking spaghetti. I got a tower that's leaning. Now we wants my fettuccine. The song just mm. appears very patronizing because there is no actual admiration or message one way or the other. Sounds like a pretty good song to me. Yeah, you never heard Indian Outlaw? I don't Tim know McGraw any Tim joint? McGraw songs, I'm afraid. Oh, boy, you're missing out. It's a good one. They, he got the squaws trying to sneak a peek of him of him in his buffalo briefs is one of the lines in it. Uh, <laughs> it, it literally is just like every single fucking stereotype listed over and over. Set to again, like steel guitar. Not even from a hateful place, just a... Guy trying to probably fill out a track on an album, and he's like really, really gotta dumb. This out. So he's like, like, yeah, he "Well, it. I know about seven things about these engines. <laughs> I know some of the stuff rhymes, so I think I can make this work." And his parody song that he puts out, becoming the biggest thing off of his like debut album, being like, "Oh fuck, now I gotta, now I gotta do a fucking music video dressed in a headdress and shit." God damn it. What? That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's a whole it's a whole fucking thing. Again, this was early ninety, like early early nineties. So nobody cared. Who cared? Like literally, not even it, it doesn't didn't matter at all. Not even people weren't even like they didn't necessarily think it was funny. They were just like, yeah, that's just something you do sometimes. You just put on Indian things. 
and then <laughs> act it out. Who cares? <laughs> and I, we need to get back to that is what I'm really <laughs> trying to get to here. It's, it's creeping back in, I think. I think we're going to, I think we'll get there someday. Looking forward to it. Hey, this one's from Reddit. Am I the asshole for saying that I won't visit Mount Rushmore to someone who just visited it? Mm. Okay. She went there with her family and she was telling my husband and I about it. They seemed to have really liked it and her husband was in awe of the craftsmanship. At this point, my husband mentioned that he has been to Mount Rushmore six times, failing to mention that all those times were before he and I were together. They assumed that we visited there together and said, that must be your guy's favorite place in the whole wide world then. Well, I feel very strongly about the Native American history of that place and the atrocities they suffered through, and I blurted out, quote, it would be such a waste of time for me as I don't find it special because of the history. <laughs> I also followed up with, maybe it's so magnificent that makes it special once, but I don't know if six times is worth it. To ease that I wasn't judging them for going... Because it had nothing to do with them. I wouldn't have even brought it up if she wouldn't have assumed I loved that place too. Conversation after that went normal and smooth. Well, as she left, my husband called me an asshole for treating her like that because apparently, quote, she was high on her trip and I said it's a waste of time. <laughs> when I said there's context, I didn't mention it when she excitedly narrating her trip. I said that she assumed we as a couple would love it. And I said it's a waste of time for me. He said that doesn't mean a thing, and what I did was wrong and vicious, and I 100% offended her. I tried to reason with him, and he said I can't take feedback. Oh, I cannot yeah. believe I'm saying this, but this is the hill he's willing to die on. I want to know, am I really the asshole here? I would need to apologize to her, because I genuinely didn't mean to offend her. And user Emma Lou Esquire responded, if you don't like the treatment of native cultures, actively support them. Just bitching up does nothing about it because it makes you look like an asshole. Yeah. 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 Uh, kind of being an asshole just in general. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> throwing your husband under the bus to show how big of an ally you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> the guy's just like, yeah, I... I've been there six times. It's great. By yourself. Like, just, like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just shut the fuck up. It's funny, though, because I think we all have those. Uh, uh, we all have a, a couple that we know personally that we can probably like very much superimpose this situation onto and just imagine how it would go in person. So makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, I can think of one, but they uh, got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> the cynical fascist posted, Do you find the character of John Redcorn to be offensive on our King of the Hill? Hmm. I find John Redcorn kind of funny, but cannot get over how terrible the representation of Native American it is. Like, it's one thing to have a Native American character who's kind of a scumbag, but actually bringing up serious native issues and treating them like complete jokes as well, that's really bad. I know it was the 1990s, but Mike Judge might have misjudged this. And Chicago Animal replied, Not at all, but I'm not woke in the slightest. To which the OP responded, I bet many Native Americans wish they didn't have to be quote woke unquote as well, but it's their reality. <laughs> To which Chicago Animals, Animal said, I doubt many Native Americans care about this character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you could say that pretty much about any uh, characters on TV and their respective minorities. Uh, most, or even just white people, no one gives a shit for the most part. <laughs> it's a very small number of people online who are crybabies who really care about it. Yeah, most Native Americans don't have it's not the reality to give a shit about John Redcorn, uh, mainly because the show hasn't been on in 15 years. <laughs> probably probably helps. that's part of it, yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, I would say he was probably one of the better Native American characters on TV. If I, were I mean, to I think, say. dude, Except I mean, from his uh, adultery, I guess. Well, I mean, you know, but, well, you I know. guess that's good for them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't yeah, drunk I mean, all the time. 
out of like the worst characters on the show, I'd say he's pretty far down the list. Um, so yeah, I don't think the representation was terrible of it, and I think it was probably handled well. The fact that it was a Native American voice actor for it and everything, they didn't just have Mike Judge mm-hmm. doing <laughs> doing a voice. Uh, pretty good on that point. So yeah, not not entirely sure what the. Uh, it's just a, another whitey getting there tidy whiteys in a bunch over something mm-hmm. that literally does not matter so yeah that's that's very white person to say that the, this this thing that i'm offended by this is their reality <laughs> like, no, i'm not it's projecting not. <laughs> but uh, i do feel very strongly about this yeah goes back to the speeding gonzalez incident from the looney tunes episode <laughs> Mexicans love that little critter, and the white people years later are like, "Oh no, wait, he's a stereotype. I, that's not good." Like that, that's my that's my 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 essay. Speedy's my essay. That's like uh, people in like uh, Ukraine being like, you know, we need to talk about uh, Captain America. It's <laughs> degrading for Americans, and we should we should stop pop- popularizing this character. He's just a stereotype of all of That's just right. what Americans are. Yeah, they hate it's him. Disgusting. Yeah, they, they must they hate must him. Really hate him. Yeah, it's very embarrassing. Uh, Turns out cultures his... love bizarre, uh, <laughs> ultra stereotypes of their culture. They fucking love it. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Russia, they cannot get rid of that pesky moose and squirrel, though. So mm. can't ever win, folks. Ooh, a rocking. Bullwinkle episode. Now that's that's the show needs to end if that fucking happens. 